hey guys this is the continuation of the last video so so that most of the guys have in the mind because we are pre-oxygenating the patient every patient's daily the adequate time they have mentioned was pre-oxygenation for three to five minutes for effective denitrogenation of the lung to replace the entire um, frc functional residual capacity with your 100 percent o2 so we have to but it is not uh, in all the individuals it is not the same so we have to know in which individuals the how much time is needed for the effective pre-oxygenation so that we will be assessing and calculating with the help of alveolar gas equation today so what is the alveolar gas equation nothing but partial pressure of alveolar oxygen is equal to FiO2 into barometric pressure that is PB that is barometric measure minus water vapor minus PaCO2 partial pressure carbon dioxide by RQ that is respiratory quotient okay RQ so this is the alveolar gas equation see okay for consider for example okay 70 kg individual is there okay and tidal volume uh, is actually you how will you calculate the FRC in an individual FRC is appro approximately is equal to 25 to 30 ml per kg okay so for this individual if you take 30 ml per kg his uh, total uh, his frc will be around 2100 ml that is frc mm, okay if you take an uh, it's approximate like that you just calculate and keep it okay so first suppose if the patient is actually in room air i will be giving two situations first situation is the patient is in room air and the patient is pre-oxygenated with 100% O2 then what are the changes in happen okay so we just substitute in this equation if the patient is in room R means how many percent of oxygen 21 percent of oxygen so PaO2 equal to 21 percent of oxygen is there that is you can return as 0.21 and if a barometric pressure is 760 minus water vapor is 47 minus PaCO2 we just standard we keep it as 40 actually okay 40 that is a uh, 5 kilopascal the constant we kept it 40 and respiratory question everyone know it's just 0.8 okay so now how much will come 0 0.21 into if a 760 minus 47 is 713 minus 40 by 8 just multiply it and you will be getting 50 okay so total how much it will come uh, 713 into 0 0.21 is 150 around that range minus 50 so PaO2 will be coming around 100 millimeters of mercury so that is PaO2 if the patient is breathing in room air. So then we have to know how many percent it is contributing, how many um, partial pressure it is contributing. Because we have to know the exact time, no, we have to know the exact person, how many percent oxygen is in the FRC. So you know this alveolar is partial pressure is 100 millimeter mercury. So atmospheric pressure is how much? 760. So with that divided by 760. So it will be contributing to 13 percent you will be known that it uh, with pao2 the approximate concentration of the alveolar o2 is approximately 13 percent in the with regards to the atmospheric pressure okay next another thing you have to know is actually you know what is vo2 that is diffusion of oxygen you know that actually what is diffusion of oxygen into your cardiac output that is the by fixed law equation your arterial minus venous concentration into 10 you know cardiac output is 5 liters per minute into alveolar minus venous concern alveolar is 10 percent venous is 5 percent so difference 10 minus 5 5 percent into 10 so approximately 5 percent 5 by 100 is 250 ml average oxygen consumption in an adult is approximately equal to 250 ml per minute is the average oxygen consumption so next we have to know suppose if this patient actually you have taken 13 percent no so in this patient frc uh, i just calculate um, frc in the individual i just taken as approximately as a uh, three liters frc can be 2.5 to 3 liters so i just taken as approximately as three liters for easier calculation okay if three liters means then how much is your 13 percent of pao2 will be contributing three liters is nothing but 3000 ml into your 13 percent of PaO2 that is 13 by your 100 so with the calculation you will be getting around 390 ml of oxygen in the FRC 
of the three three liters, thirteen percent of oxygen contributing to the three ninety mL. Okay, so now you already know this V O two part is different. The V O two is the normal diffusion of oxygen at a rate is three fifty mL, and you will be having the F R C. You will be getting each breath. You will be having three fifty mL of O two. So now you have to know how many minutes the patient can withstand if the patient uh, is on room and how many minutes if the patient is taken for anesthesia can withstand and not going for desaturation. So that we will calculate by. 350 ml of FRC patient is having, and uh, per minute he will be having VO2, you know, 250 ml per minute. So 250 ml per minute. So when we divide that, you will be getting approximate time. That is approximately will be between 1.56 minutes. So in this patient, if we maintain on room air, and this patient if they induced. And if the patient is not pre-oxygenated and maintained on the room, and it is able to withstand hypoxia up to 1.56 minutes. After that, patient will start desaturating. So that um, this example now you are uh, you know that approximately 1.6 minutes. Now we are going to apply that to the pre-oxygenated patient with 100% and seeing how much minutes that the same patient is able to maintain. That. Okay. So the same patient, I am just applying the alveolar just pre-oxygenation at hundred percent. Okay. The same equation just apply. You know what is alveolar oxygen is equal to? Is the same thing hundred percent, which is represented as point one FiO two into if a barometric pressure seven sixty minus water vapor seven forty seven minus forty by point eight. So you will be getting point one into. Was seven sixty minus forty seven thirteen minus fifty. Okay, that is approximately you have already calculated fifty. So now point one uh, into seven one three. So it will be approximately coming to seven one three minus fifty. So total is six sixty three millimeters of mercury. That is the PaO two. So with room air, how much is the oxygen? Uh, you will be in room air. How much is oxygen is actually hundred. But with hundred percent oxygen, if a uh, patient if a pre-oxygenated, you will be getting PaO two of six sixty three millimeter mercury. So you have to calculate now how many percent which is contributing to the atmospheric pressure. Six sixty three by seven sixty the atmospheric pressure. So you will be getting approximately eighty seven percent of the alveolar uh, gases is filled by your oxygen. This much percent. Whereas in room air it is only thirteen percent, whereas in pre-oxygenated patient it is eighty-seven percent. Okay, so you just calculated before so we are taken as a constant. FRC is actually three liters. Three liters of that actually eighty-seven percent is already oxygen because of this pre-oxygenation. Okay, so now we are actually seeing how many percent it is contributing to that of three liters. Uh, how many mL of oxygen is there in three liters? So three thousand into eighty-seven percent. So eighty-seven by hundred of the eighty-seven percent, you will be having seventy-eight, eighty-seven into three. It will be around three thousand six seventeen. I have a calculator with me, so I calculated of O two is there of the three liters two thousand six seventeen. I mean of O two is there. Okay. So now we have to calculate how many minutes the patient with hundred percent can able to withstand. Uh, that means they are not going for desaturation. How much time they able to withstand? So you know that actually already you know normal adult oxygen consumption is two fifty mL per minute. I already mentioned the VO two definition. So just calculate of two one seven mL of VO two in two fifty mL per minute every minute if the patient is taking, then it will be the duration the able to withstand desaturation is. Ten point four seven minutes. Okay, if you pre-oxygenated the patient at hundred percent with the uh, patient having FRC of three liters, adequately for three to five minutes. If uh, you have actually pre-oxygenated the patient well, you have this ten minutes forty seven seconds of period safe apnea period, so that you can. Uh, Uh, they were intubation even in difficult airways encounter also the patient won't desaturate at a very faster rate okay 
so this is the difference compared to room air we are getting in room air only 1.56 minutes the same patient in 100 percent you are getting 10.47 minutes okay it's a main difference so remaining things i will be discussing in detail in the next forthcoming video okay thank you guys